Hi, I'm Neha, and today I'll be talking about team organization. So, at the beginning of the year, you should start off by setting your team's goals in like the robot side and the outreach side and what you want to do as a team. So for your robot, do you want offensive or defensive? What kind of scoring elements do you want to prioritize? And do you want to do all the elements on autonomous? And you have to think about exactly what your robot's going to do. And then as a team, for like rookie teams, you want to consider more about learning and connecting with STEM experts and maybe for more experienced teams, you can work on mentoring other teams. So you wanna set like outreach goals as well and have different focuses. So this is an example of our team goals that we put in our engineering notebook. So we've set some goals on the left side, like learn how to program and learn how to use CAD. And then in the middle, we have like comments on how we've accomplished our goals. And then on the very right, uh, left side, or right side, uh, we have tracking for uh, whether you have the goal complete, incomplete, or ongoing. And we've color coded it so we can see throughout the year how we've progressed on our goals. Um, so next is the issue of team captain. So should you have one team captain or two team captains? What do they do for the team? So the team captain is the face of your team at tournaments, especially at the league championships and onwards. During a lion selection, your team captain will go up and represent your team and hold your robot uh, during a lion selection. And when teams come to talk uh, about a lion selection, etc., they'll talk to your team captain. And during meetings, your team captain and the team team leads should be leading your team. So at the beginning of each meeting, we have a session where, like a show and tell session, where we each talk about what we've done before. So the team leads, like the arm or the collection system or the hanger, they talk about what they've done. So they have like a prototype of, or a cardboard model of their design and everybody else will offer feedback and the team captain and team leads will work together to figure out what else needs to be done. And so for co-captains, we've had one captain throughout our um, three seasons. But um, in our last year, we had two captains because our captain was graduating. And having one captain has worked out for us in general. But uh, it depends on the team size and whatever works for you. Um, and then next is, so I've divided the roles into three parts. There's preseason roles, season roles, and then the tournament. So during the preseason, you have the business team. So the business team is uh, the team that gets funding for your team. So you have to actively reach out to sponsors and write grants in order to get funding for your team. And you need to plan out and consider the budget of your team. What are you going to need funding for? What are the specific expenses of your team? Like travel, what kind of parts are you gonna use? And then the next team is uh, the outreach team. So the outreach team has to actively find and organize events for your team. And they have to decide what's the focus of your outreach. Do you want to focus on promoting first, mentoring other teams, learning from STEM experts? There's different kinds of uh, focuses that your outreach can do. And you have to find outreach events based on that. And then there's two types of outreach that outreaches that you can attend. There's um, outreaches that you just go to and volunteer at, and there's also outreaches that you're actively organizing. So these people will be the leaders of these events, and they'll be actively organizing these events. And then the next one is the marketing and social media. So these people will create, manage, and update the social media t uh, pages for your team. So we've used Facebook, uh, Twitter, and um, YouTube. And YouTube is generally for like robot reveals and videos of matches. And this year we've also launched our website, hotwiredrobotics.org. And we have like uh, how-to video tutorials on that website. So your team should also like uh, post uh, events upcoming outreach events and you can just have a page so other teams can reach out to you and contact you in case they have any questions. And the marketing team should also be creating the pit decorations like and they should also be creating flyers to hand out to other teams. So this is generally in like super regionals and worlds where more of this stuff happens and you can create like a flyer to um, advertise yourself to other teams showing like what kind of stuff you can do and this really helps with scouting as well. And then during the season, uh, you have the build team. So 
After the kickoff, the challenge is released and your team should get together and start brainstorming. So you can think about which elements are worth uh, building. You have to think about like a cost benefit analysis. Is it worth uh, the investment of building a hangar when it's only worth 10 points? So once you've considered that, you have, you have like the main elements like the hangar and the arm and the collection system. So then people uh, will decide based on their interests which group they want to select and then you should assign team leads based on their experience for each uh, subgroup and then uh, you should start building the robot but start off with like prototypes and drawings so you can show the other members and get feedback and the most important thing is that you guys should be uh, constantly communicating because you only have an 18 inch box to fit all the elements of the robot in and 3D modeling and communication can also help when you're just generally building the robot and put integrating all the pieces into one cohesive robot. Um, so for programming, um, we have one main programmer and one or two sub-programmers, as uh, Justin said before. And we have the main programmer do most of the autonomous programming and assist the other two programmers with their work. Um, so next is the drive team. So the drive team consists of one coach and two drivers. And in our first two years, we had two drive teams, um, but last year we had one drive team. So with two drive teams, we realized that um, driver practice is not used as efficiently, and it, it became too much of a hassle to switch between drive teams. But there's also the pro of having the two drive teams so the teams can switch out. But we've decided that one drive team works for us, and you guys can decide based on your team. And um, when you're doing the driver practice, you should start this driver practice at least two weeks before League One, and you should set goals for yourself, like, I want to score five blocks in the high goal by the end of this practice. And you should use um, a timer to simulate a real tournament and get the tension and the atmosphere that you're looking for. And then the next one is PTC. So PTC is like a 3D modeling software, and these people will be working with the build team throughout the season to create a 3D ongoing dynamic model of the robot. So they'll take measurements of the robot, work with the build team, and create a model. But PTC also has another use. So at the beginning of the season, this year was a crazy challenge, climbing up the mountain. So you're able to test out designs and do stress calculations and simulate gravity with PTC before you build it. So it's a really useful tool to figure out what you want to build. And we've also used PTC um, drawings and uh, pictures in our, in our engineering notebook to give the judges a better idea of how our design process went. And uh, the, la the next one is engineering notebook. So these people um, have the job of assigning engineering notebook entries to other people. And uh, we've used email to send out the assignment list. And what you also have to do is format the engineering notebook. So you have to decide how you want to do it. We had a task and then a reflection and then like uh, how we did it and what's the impact. And we also have like the colors that go with our team. And with that design, uh, the other team members have less work to do and they just get to copy paste it and just type in. And uh, what, what else you have to do is edit and revise all the entries to make sure they flow together as one whole. And you also have to finish all like the little details like adding in the cross sections, the signature at the bottom, making sure that there's a bill of material, etc. And so tournament roles, you want to have like a quick fix team. So this is usually the drive team and a couple other builders and the programmer. So during a match or a tournament, you can have all kinds of problems and you need to be ready for that. So our drive team, we've made sure that they can change motors in under two minutes. So this uh, quick fix team is, uh, is necessary for any tournament. But as you go further to like league championships and super qualifiers, you want to have um, the scouting. So the, the scouts, there's two types of scouting, pre-game scouting and in-game scouting. So these people have to create the sheets for scouting. They have to write down all the team names that are attending, and then they have to write down the different scoring elements and determine what matters to us at a team, what do we want in another team. And then during matches, 
they can write down like how the autonomous is going and what kind of scoring elements they have. So these people have the job of assigning people or doing it themselves to do the actual scouting and create the sheets in order to scout. Um, there's also the judging aspect. So for judging, you should start judging at least two weeks before the league championships, the first uh, judging tournament. So the person who knows most about their own topic, like if I've worked on the hangar throughout the entire season, I will write a script um, based on the hangar and then memorize it. And my job is to come to practice and um, so the entire judging flows. And you also want these people to create visuals for judging, like boards or a slideshow. So this should also be done at, like one or two weeks before the tournament. And then um, the next role is the members at the pit. So this is um, generally after Oregon State. So in Oregon, the judges have like a set time, like 5.30 to 6.30. But once you get to super regionals and further, um, the judges will just be roaming around. So how we fixed this problem is we had a shift system with scouts um, uh, scouting from like 12 to 1, 1 to 2, and same with the pit. So you want to have at least two to three members there at all times. Um, so there's also the question of um, mixing it up. So what if members want to be in more than one role? Or what, what if one person is solely devoted to like outreach or building? So this depends on a couple factors. So number one is like the team size. So if you have a lot of people, you may be able to have one or two people devoted solely to outreach. But if you only have two or five people in your team, you need everyone to focus on building and programming. And outreach can be more of a preseason thing if you'd like and there's also like the overall workload so we've realized towards the middle of the season and further on there's less work to be done on the robot and maybe like five people can be doing that while the rest of the team can be working on outreach and judging so and there's also the team members interest so you should consider whatever the people want to do so it depends on your team um. There's also uh, scheduling meetings. So at the beginning of the season, you should probably decide uh, what days of the week you want your meetings to be on. So we have our meetings uh, 7 to 9, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and 3.30 to 5.30 on Saturday. So we have two-hour meetings, and I think that two hours is pretty much the cap. And we go over like maybe 30 minutes at most. And we actually have extra meetings before the tournaments. So we actually had a robotathon one day where we spent the whole day uh, just working on the robot before the tournament. And this is especially during the league season when you're uh, developing your robot and still figuring out what you want your robot to do. And there's also like the aspect of um, the expectations for the members. So we expect our members to come to three out of four meetings a week. So again, this is based on your team size and what kind of work the members are doing. So the meeting, you want to decide um, where your meeting is happening and who the team leads and team captains are. And for a meeting place, you need space for the entire FTC playing field. And you need space for your tools and your parts and space for everyone to work. And then um, the team captain and team leads can be based on interest and experience as well. Um, and then the captain and leads will be doing the assignment of work and making sure that everyone uh, gets their work done by the deadline. And so for team communication, we use email and we have a hotwired Google group that we use. And this includes the coaches, the parents, and the team members. So this is just general information for everyone. And then we also have text. So like at Super Regionals and Worlds, when a pit judge is coming over, we've had to quickly text our other teammates to let them know that the pit judge is there. And um, we also have a Facebook and Google Hangouts chat just for the team members to communicate with each other. Um, and there's also the question of what if team members don't follow through? So the first thing you should do is send them a quick email, phone call, or text. And just usually a quick, simple reminder is enough. But if that doesn't work, just make sure at the next meeting they complete the previous task before starting another task. And another key thing is when a member starts a, a task, you should make sure they understand how much effort and how much energy it takes to complete the task. So both ends are clear about what needs to be done. And uh, like finally, if, if 
tasks are consistently not being done, it, the members that are completing their tasks on time and going above and beyond have more opportunities than the people who are not following through. So finally, key, three key things to remember. So um, number one, you should have a clear organized meeting schedule. So you have enough time to get the robot built and get all the work done. And then um, next, you should make sure the team leads and team members are communicating and getting things done. And the final thing is that um, make sure that everyone is always on the same page. So the show and tell meeting that we have at the session that we have at the beginning of each meeting is super helpful to making sure everyone knows what's happening in the team.